Our elders are not here watching after you to make sure you don't do dumb things. They're here to make sure that you are being fed spiritually. And then when you need advice, you can get good spiritual advice. And when you need a hug, you can get a good hug. Okay? Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. You know what that means? There are some bad shepherds. And the name of this sermon is Good Shepherd, Bad Shepherd. How do you know who the good shepherd is? How do you know who the bad shepherd is? Well, the bad shepherds run away a lot. <laughs> right? Danger comes, something happens, maybe there's some controversy, and they run. They don't get their hands dirty. They don't endanger the law. As a matter of fact, they don't even stoop the level of really taking care of the sheep. We're talking about the Jewish religious leaders. Do you remember the author's original intent to his original audience? Why John wrote this book? It's because his readers were leaning dangerously towards being like these Jewish religious leaders. And John wanted them to know what Jesus thought about that. Good shepherd, bad shepherd. Jesus, I am the good shepherd. He said, in verse 14, he says again, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. My sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. This has been a recurring theme, right? And I lay down my life for the sheep. Says, I have other sheep who are not of this flock. I will bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and they shall be one flock and one shepherd. I, we're... We're talking about Gentiles here, okay? John's original audience in Asia Minor, the Christians were Jewish and they were Gentiles. And he said, I'm going to make one flock out of them. But they're going to recognize my voice. He says, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up. This command I receive from my Father. Very, very, very important. Jesus makes that sacrifice that we celebrate every Sunday. Right? He said, this is the reason I'm a good shepherd, because I care enough to die for your spiritual needs. It's not an accident, though. He said, I deliberately am going to lay down my life. No one's going to sneak up and take it from me. This thing isn't going to happen by accident and say, oh, isn't that a pity? If only Jesus could have avoided that. He said, no, I am going to do this because I care about your spiritual needs. Not just yours, but the spiritual needs of the whole flock. One flock. One flock. Let's see how much sense this made to the Pharisees who were following him. At these words, the Jews were again divided. Many of them said, He's demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? Why are we following this guy around? Why are we listening to him? I don't like what he's saying. I don't like what he, what he talks about. I hate the guy. He's crazy. He's nuts. <clears throat> Must have a demon. Why are we wasting our time? On the other side of the coin, others said, these are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. How can a demon open the eyes of the blind? They were divided about Jesus. None of them liked the message. None of them. 
Because He's going to destroy their whole religious system. He's going to take away all of that prestige they've accumulated. He's going to take care of all of that power that they have gathered for themselves. He's going to take all of that away and destroy it. And we desperately needed to do that. We desperately need to avoid rebuilding the same kind of system. Our shepherds are going to be like chapter 21 of this book. When Jesus talks to Peter, he says, Peter, do you love me? We'll get to there. Okay? <laughs> that won't be next week. <laughs> but he says, Peter, take care of my lambs. And then when Peter writes, in 1 Peter chapter 5, he writes to the shepherds. He said, take care of the sheep like the main shepherd, like the, the head shepherd, like, like Jesus did. Make sure that you're pointing them to Jesus. Don't rebuild some religious system where they have to achieve something, they have to gain something, they have to follow somebody, somebody not named Jesus. You know how we take care of each other spiritually? When we point each other to Jesus. And that's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Why do I do it anyway? It's because of Jesus. Right? What are our hope? What's my hope in the future? Because well, Jesus. Right? How, how, why, why am I trying to te treat you in a way that's not natural for me? Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Why do we come together to sing? Well, because, because of Jesus. Right? Why do we say the Lord's Prayer? Well, because of Jesus. Why do we have a work day next Saturday? Because of Jesus. I mean, this is because it, it's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Why do we take the Lord's Supper every Sunday? To remind us it's all about Jesus. The forgiveness that we need the grace that He gives. Why do we sing this hymn? Prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, which is number 408. Because of Jesus. Why do we pass out the trays? Why do we take that little piece of bread? Why do we take a little bit of juice? Because, because of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who lays down His life for the sheep. Let's, um, let's sing number 408 together as we prepare for the Lord's Supper.